Hi folks, Harry Frank from Ride Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to guide you through what is new in Trap Code Suite 14.1. Most of the changes we'll find in this Trap Code Suite update are going to be found in Trap Code Form 3.1, so I'd like to start here. Now, in the last update to Trap Code Form, we added this window called the Designer. And if I click on this, this brings up a window that is an interactive environment where we can make changes and see those changes in real time as we make them. So if I make changes to color or perhaps fractal field, we'll see the icons change and we'll see the changes playback here in the playback window. I'm going to go to the fractal field here and set this to flow loop. So this will loop seamlessly. You can see down here that we've actually added some playback controls showing our current playback time, whether or not it's looping, and we can even adjust the duration right here. Pause and play can be very handy when you're working with very dense trap code form setups where the rendering starts to slow down. And you can pause it and just watch one frame. New to trap code form 3.1 is the ability to work with multiple systems within one instance of the plugin. Prior to this, if you wanted multiple form systems within one composition of After Effects, you would have to duplicate your layers and work with different copies of the plugin on different layers. The problem with that is that this creates a disconnected 3D space in between your particles. They do not properly sort with each other in Z space, and it also just makes it difficult to work across the hundreds of parameters you'll find in, in form across two totally different layers. So now in form 3.1, you can add multiple form particle systems to the same layer. All of these particles will sort in the same Z space. There's even some really cool stuff you can do in terms of inheriting properties from one system to the other. Let me show you how this works. So right now I added a second form system. It's using the default base form settings, but this is using its own color of white. Now also notice this very first one is called the master form. This is the master system, and that will make sense in just a second, what that means. Let me jump down to form two, and you can see there's a little connection here between the master form and the second form system. I'm gonna go to this block right here and change the base form to a sphere and make it a bit bigger, and I'll set these sphere layers to just one. So now we have a sphere outside of that uh, first form system. I'm going to add some more particles in here just so it's easier to see. Now, remember early on I added some fractal field displacement to that first form system. You can see that form system 2 also has some fractal field displacement. The reason it's doing that is if we look down here in our settings, we'll see that we don't have any settings defined for the fractal field for system number 2. When there are not settings defined for any given system, it will inherit those properties from the master system. So if I make changes to this fractal field here, it will happen not only to the master system, it will apply to the additional systems below it. Now, if I don't want this to inherit those properties, I can simply click the plus button here and add another block. And I can either choose from some presets or I can just set the default settings. And this will use a setting of none for the fractal field. So the technical understanding of this is pretty straightforward, but as a designer, it will take you some time to sort of wrap your head around rethinking about how you work with track code form in general. So let me show you just one quick example of this, of how this benefits you as a designer. So I'm gonna go over to the presets here, which I can access by rolling over this left side. Notice we have multiple form presets. These contain multiple form systems, and we have the older single form presets. So let me go to the multiple form presets and load this one here called Curves Graph. And let's just start soloing some of these layers to see how this multiple form stuff helps us as a designer. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and solo this very first layer. So we can see that we've got some flowing strings, and uh, this is using some fractal field displacement along the y-axis. I've set a curve graph here so that there is no fractal displacement on either end, so it's kind of pinned to one side and the other. It is jumping because the playback is looping, but the form... Uh, is not set to loop. So I'm going to click on loop. And 
Now this should be a nice smooth loop. So we've got a color map here, and this applies to a few different strings across Z space, and we are using box strings. Pretty cool. So let's turn on form system number two. This is using a custom sprite, and it's using a box form, but it only has one set of particles, but it's sharing the fractal field. So those particles move in the same movement as those strings. So as they move, I have one place where I can adjust the overall displacement of both of these systems and watch it play back in real time. Form three is a very subtle set of particles that are also moving in the same space, um, but it's just some very small spheres. And this is a very significant thing with multiple systems in both form as well as trap code particular, is that you can dedicate entire particle systems to things that are very small and subtle. So uh, we have the strings, we have the sprites that are moving along, we have these tiny spheres, and then system four is totally disconnected from everything else. It's just a set of lines. So there's no fractal field displacement, it has its own color, and uh, it's not really doing anything at all other than just kind of sitting there as a set of lines. So this is a great example of working with multiple form systems. So you can set disconnected systems that are perhaps graph lines, and this last one here is also just a horizontal line uh, that's a little bit thicker in the middle. So multiple form systems is a huge addition to trap code form. This kind of changes everything in terms of how you work with trap code form, how you design with it, and how this tool uh, can help you. Now, I do encourage you to go through the multiple form presets. Uh, as the designer on these, I spent a lot of time just kind of wrapping my head around what all of this means as a designer and how this stuff can work. So, you know, sometimes you can make these little uh, you know, doodad kind of things like this, but it's also just fun as a design tool where we can just add random shapes and we don't even have to have movement. We can just kind of work with this as a design tool, or we can work with uh, grid kind of backgrounds like this, or think more spacey and adding really crazy shapes that uh, kind of twist and bend and do all kinds of different things. So I encourage you to go through the presets and this will definitely get your creativity flowing in terms of how you can work with different layers and uh, just give you some ideas and pointers on uh, where to start with multiple forms. One other note, trap code form also includes the same GPU acceleration that you find in trap code particular. And just like particular, this handles rendering in a very specific way where it is doing the particle image rendering. So the image of the particle, it's sorting in Z space, it's blending depth of field, uh, or shadows and all that kind of stuff that we render. So what GPU does not handle are things like point calculations in space. So when you're looking for GPU acceleration, think more of when your image rendering is acting as a bottleneck rather than the sheer number of points. And what I mean by that is, let's say I set this to 70 by 70 by 70 particles in a grid. This is a lot of point calculations. All of these point calculations, where these particles are in space, this is still handled on the CPU. So switching this over to GPU isn't really gonna see much of a render benefit. Where you will see a benefit is where you have perhaps a lower number of particles, but your render is coming to a bottleneck because you are trying to add particles that are very expensive on the CPU. So let me add a basic sprite here. We'll do a little bit of color mapping and let me turn up the overall size. In fact, maybe I'll set this to 16 by 16 just so we can see these. And let's set the fractal field to, ex to affect the size. I'll also go into shadow lets and add a bit of uh, shading to these. So pretty cool, and we can see that this is actually rendering pretty quickly. The reason this is rendering pretty quickly is that we are using GPU rendering. GPU streaming is actually the faster of the two options. Streaming takes advantage of the full range of cores on your graphics card, whereas direct is more compatible with other things like mixed blend modes and quick time sprites and stuff like that. But it's much slower because it has your GPU 
act like it is a CPU and it funnels through one core of the card. So let me switch this back over to CPU and you can see a huge difference in the rendering speed when we switch this over to CPU. The particle rendering itself, the actual image rendering and pushing this through the CPU is really bogging down our CPU. So let's switch this back to streaming and we can see the huge jump in speed. Now, the remaining new items you'll find in Trap Code Suite are not as going to be dramatic as the changes that you'll see to form. Trap Code in particular got the same set of playback controls, so we can pause, playback, jump to specific points in time, define loop durations, all that kind of stuff. But there's one new very small thing that was added that I think is really cool, which is under emitter behavior, we've got one new setting here, which is from emitter speed. Now, it's actually going to give you an alert here saying that, well, your particles are now being defined from the movement of your emitter. So right now there's no movement because I'm not clicking and moving anything around. So what this means is that the particle count, how many particles per second are being generated, is being taken directly from the speed at which your emitter is moving. So if I click and I start dragging, we'll see that as I move, we'll have particles, and as my emitter comes to a stop, it stops generating particles. There's so many applications for this, uh, from you know perhaps rocket ship uh, smoke or something that is generated from how fast it moves, or just overall motion graphics designs. This is a really cool thing that was uh, added and I think is a lot of fun. Now I'd like to show you one more small feature that I think is actually a really great workflow helper. I'm going to go over to our presets and load a very basic single system preset. Now I've found that as I'm designing here within the designer window, I'll often duplicate a system and want a similar group of settings, but perhaps use smaller particles and a higher particle count. So the idea being one system is kind of large particles with a smaller particles per second count, and then the second system might be small particles with a higher particles per second count. And you get this sort of nice detailed filled out kind of look. The problem with this is that it forces you to jump back and forth between two systems. So if I go to this first system here and I turn this down or up, it has no effect on that secondary system. That is until now. You can go to the second system and check this box right here that says particles relative to master. So now this count here becomes a relative count to the master system. So if I go to the master system and I say I want fewer particles here, we'll still have more particles in the second system, but it is following the master system. And I think this is a really cool workflow helper. Now let's move on to 3D Stroke, and I'm really excited about this because 3D Stroke goes back a long way with a lot of motion designers. This is one, probably one of the very first trap code plugins that a lot of motion designers used. This new update to Trap Code Suite actually brings some really exciting new functionality to 3D Stroke. And so let me uh, just draw some basic uh, splines in here so that our stroke has something to render on. So what has been added is the ability to do color mapping. So if I set a color map here, just like uh, all of our other Trap Code products, we can define you know a custom map or pull up one of the small number of presets or randomize it. But we can set the color over the map of the 3D stroke. We can also have it uh, follow the offset. So if I go into our offset here, we can have the color map move with the offset of the stroke, or we can have it um, simply fixed in place. So if I go back to this offset and move this, the color map will actually stay fixed. There's a, an overall uh, absolute X or absolute Y space. So this will go from left to right or top to bottom or front to back and Z space. So let's set this back to uh, over path. Another thing added is a variable thickness. So right now we have a thickness of 10. Let me turn this up. And this has never been variable over the spline. Uh, but now in this version, we have a thickness curve. So you, if I go in here and I select something that perhaps tapers it at the beginning and the end, or if I pull up a different curve, kind of vary it like that, so I can see that over the spline, we have a variable thickness. And this is an addition to the actual tapering that we had before. 
there's some small workflow things that you'll find in there, like the fact that the comp camera actually defaults to on. So if you are using an After Effects camera, it will actually use that by default rather than forcing you to actually check that. And there's been some small additions to the repeater where we have individual X, Y, and Z scaling. So I can perhaps repeat these. And uh, if we... set some rotation like that, we can vary the X, Y, and Z scale for the repeaters individually. Lastly, there is a small update to Trap Code Mirror. Now, this update is actually going to be more beneficial for a solid looking shape rather than this kind of default plasma kind of look. So let's make a few changes. First, I want this to be bigger, so I'm just going to turn up the overall size and let's add some more vertices just to give it some more detail. I'm going to turn the fractal amplitude and frequency down just a little bit, just so we can just have a very simple shape here. So I'll go to the shader and change this from density, and I'm going to set this to a smooth renderer. And you can think of this sort of like a Fong renderer in 3D, where it's basically smoothing out the surface and rendering as a solid surface. Now, to see this in a bit more detail, it really does help to have some sort of light source in our scene. So I'm going to add that. So when we do this in Mirror, we end up with this kind of flat, plasticky kind of looking thing. And there's lots of ways to kind of customize this in terms of the specular and uh, diffuse and all that. But a cool thing that's been added is a feature that was found in Trapcode DAO, which is this image-based lighting section right here. So we have a few different built-in environments, such as this like sunset field or this dark industrial kind of thing. I'll just leave this set back to the sunset field. I'm going to pull down the overall diffuse. So what we can see is that we end up with this really kind of reflective surface. And what we can see is that the color of the surface is now inheriting a uh, spherical map that's built into the plugin. Also in this shader here, I should actually set this uh, blend mode to off. So the overlapping sections are not actually blending with each other. And one last thing that's been added to Mirror that was also added to DAO in the last release was the ability to render depth of field. So if I go into rendering here, I set the depth of field to use the camera settings and I go to my camera and I turn on depth of field, which is actually on by default, but I'm just going to exaggerate it here by turning up the overall aperture. And let's set the focus distance so that we can perhaps put part of the uh, mirror object actually in focus. There we go. So you can see our focus is right here and kind of in the middle and the front and back areas are now out of focus. So this is using the camera settings uh, from After Effects and uh, Mirror is inheriting those and rendering uh, an OpenGL based uh, depth of field. So those are the things that are new in Trapcode Suite 14.1. My name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you next time. Yeah.